will tell us about generalized class tolerance. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about some uh, joint work that I did with Marcus Streng on a uh, generalization of class polynomials. So I'd like to start by telling you about normal class polynomials. And this begins with uh, elliptic curves. Hopefully. Oh, I guess not. Ah, I see. Okay. Elliptic curves over the complex numbers. So uh, if I have a lattice in the complex numbers, let's say spanned by one and uh, a tau in the upper half plane, then I can make an elliptic curve out of it by taking the quotient of C by this, uh, this lattice. And every elliptic curve over the complex numbers is isomorphic, at least as a complex analytic object to one of these. Uh, in fact, if I define a morphism of lattices just to be a complex number that multiplies one lattice into the other, then you can really make this into an equivalent of categories between lattices on one hand and elliptic curves that we see on the other hand. Uh, and most of these lattices, so most of these elliptic curves, they don't have a lot of endomorphism. So if you look at the complex numbers that multiply lattice into itself, then most of the time it's just integers, except when tau satisfies a quadratic equation. And in that case, we say that the corresponding elliptic curve has complex multiplication because also some multiple of tau is in the anamorphism ring. And in that case, I'll denote the anamorphism ring by O, which is some order inside of the imaginary poetic fields generated by tau. Uh, and if I have such a tau, then I can look at something called the Hilbert class polynomial. And that's just a minimal polynomial over K of the J invariant of tau. If I take the modular J function, I apply it to tau. If I uh, join this to the field K, then I get a Galois extension. And the conjugates of this J of tau are precisely the J invariants of the other elliptic curves that have an amorphism ring uh, isomorphic to O. And it turns out that this is a polynomial with integer coefficients, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, and this field, kj of tau. So first of all, let me mention, so this, this thing, h tau of x, it, it only depends on O, right? So sometimes people also denote it by h O of x or h D of x, where it's just a discriminant of this, this O. Uh, and this field, kj of tau, it also depends only on O, and that's the... Uh, called the ring class field of O. And if you know a bit about class field theory, then you know that this Galois group over there is actually isomorphic to the ring class group of O. So the degree of the Hilbert class polynomial is always the class number of O. All right, so why would you care about Hilbert class polynomials? Well, one reason is because you can use them to construct elliptic curves with a given number of points. So there's this thing called the CM method, which let's say given both integer Q and integer N constructs an elliptic curve with over FQ with exactly N points. So how do you use the Hilbert class polynomial to do this? Because the Hilbert class polynomial says something about and the morphism rings. So in other words, what does this, this, what does this number of points have to do with the anamorphism ring? Uh, well, specifying the number of points is the same as specifying the trace of the curve. So the number T is the trace of the Q for Benius. And if a curve has trace T, then simply from the fact that the for Benius is in the anamorphism ring, Follow that the discriminant of the Frobenius is some square multiple of the discriminant of the order. So t squared minus 4q is some square multiple of the discriminant of the endomorphism ring. 
So now, is, how does this uh, CM method thing work? So I get a Q and a T, and I want the curve of FQ with trace T. First, I, I solve this equation. So I find some imaginary quadratic discriminants uh, for which this equation has a solution. So some square multiple of D is T squared minus 4Q. Uh, then I compute the Hilbert class polynomial of discriminant D, and I extract the root from it. So that's some roots over FQ of <laughs> HQ modulo P. It turns out that this root always exists. Uh, and then I output a curve with J invariant equal to this root. Uh, and then I get something with trace plus or minus T, because this, this equation, which you see in the first point, forgets about the sign of t. So you get plus or minus trace t. And so you get either ej or let me twist to that. And that always has the, the correct number of points. So the, the bottleneck in this, this algorithm is the, the second step. Because this Hilbert class polynomial is uh, that's quite large, quite quite quickly. And for example, uh, the one corresponding to discriminants minus 103, then it's already quite big. And it doesn't get better for larger discriminants. <laughs> so if I take like discriminant 10 to the 16 or something, I get something that's already too big to fit in a normal computer. Uh, and you might actually argue that, well, you don't really need the Hilbert class polynomial over Z right there. You just compute it modulo P directly, maybe. And that's actually how the fastest methods do it. But the running time still depends on the size of the coefficients as a polynomial over, over Z. Uh, so what did people do to, to try to make these things smaller? Well, they looked at class polynomials where you replace the J invariant with a different modular function. So if I have a modular function F and some uh, tau imaginary quadratic in the upper half plane, then I call the pair F comma tau uh, class invariant. If F of tau lies in this ring class field the associated order. So this O that was this order associated to tau that's Z adjoined A tau. Uh, and then again, you define the, the class polynomial as the minimal polynomial of f of tau over k. And now the idea is that if you choose f in a smart way, then the polynomial will become smaller. For example, I take for f this, uh, this eta function over there. So this is, doesn't really matter what it is, it's some modular function. It's also called the, the Weber function, and it's related to the J invariant according to that polynomial equation you see over there. And then the class polynomial associated to discriminant minus 103 is already much smaller. Uh, and these things you can use equally well in the CM method, for example. So the only thing that you have to do extra is once you extract the root of this, then you have to find the corresponding J invariants by using this, this equation that you see above there, but that's not a very costly step. Uh, okay, so what's the reason why these polynomials get, get smaller? Uh, well, there's this thing called the, the reduction factor. So for a modular function, you can find the reduction factor as the quotient of the degree of the J function with the degree of function F seen as a function on the same modular curve. And if you do that for this vapor function, then you get 72. Uh, and it turns out that under some conditions, so if I have a, let's say a sequence of, of CM points tau, for which f of tau generates the ring class fields and the height of the j invariance goes to infinity, 
then this reduction factor really tells me something about the height reduction of the of the modular of the class polynomials. So what do I have there? Like this norm infinity, that's just the largest coefficient of the polynomial. And then the log of that, it's kind of like the number of digits I need to write it down. So the quotient of this number of digits goes to the reduction factor. So in this case, that would be, for example, would be 72. So you'd expect to use about 72 times less digits to write down class polynomials for F when compared to, to uh, the Hilbert class polynomial. Uh, right, uh, so can you do better? Well, not much better than 72 because there's this theorem that says that the reduction factor for any modular function is always at most about 100. Uh, and in fact, no one has ever found a function that's better than 72. So probably 72 is the best, but yeah, it's this upper bound of 100 and under some conjecture called Selberg's uh, eigenvalue conjecture, this upper bound even becomes 96, I believe. Uh, okay, so that's a bit sad. Uh, so what, uh, what we did, is we, uh, we generalize these class polynomials a bit further to become uh, multivariate. So instead of like univariate class polynomials, so univariate functions that, uh, that vanish at the Galois orbit of the CM points, I get multivariate functions that also vanish, but now at the Galois orbit of the CM points on a modular curve. So don't worry, I'll explain a bit what this, uh, what this means. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain it in the, the simplest example. So let's see, we, let's say a Weierstrass curve that happens to be a modular curve. So what does it mean? It means you can view the coordinate functions X and Y as modular functions that happen to satisfy the equation of the curve. Uh, and now if I have, uh, a tau and the upper half plane, such that x of tau and y of tau are class invariants. What did this mean again? It means that x of tau and y of tau are in the ring class field. Uh, so in other words, this point P on the curve C lies over the ring class field. I can also find this Galois group formed by joining the coordinates. Uh, okay. And then what's the generalized class function? Well, that's some function on the curve C uh, and I define it by its divisor. So it's only well defined up to scaling by a non-zero element of K. Uh, and what is this thing? It's zero at the Galois orbit of P. It's also zero at minus the sum of the points in the Galois orbit. Uh, so this is viewed as a sum using the group law of the elliptic curve. And its poles are only at the point at infinity. And what's the class polynomial? Well, that's just expressing this as a function in terms of the coordinates x and y. But that's a polynomial in this case in two variables. Uh, okay, so I, I have a picture to explain it a little bit further. What, what, what does this do? So I have a tau in the complex of a health plane, and I have this function psi. And this is the thing that replaces the J invariant for the regular Hilbert class polynomial. So I take some function to a modular curve C, and this time it's not one modular function, but a pair of modular functions. And I end up somewhere on the curve C. And now I take the Galois orbit of this point. So I get some other points on the curve. No sigma one of the point, sigma two, and so on. And I want to make a function that's zero on all of these points. Well, that doesn't necessarily exist. So I also add minus the sum of the points on the elliptic curve. And then get a divisor that's a principle. So I can make a function that's zero at all of these points and only has its full at uh, f t. Okay, so let's look at an example. If I have 
x zero plus 119. What's that thing? Oh, that's the modular curve x zero 119, quotiented by the Krieger Atkin Lehner evolution. And that turns out to be a wireless curve. That's this wireless model where x and y are modular functions given by these few expansions. And then uh, for this tau that I had before, this thing of discriminant minus 103, I get uh, a multivariate glass polynomial. And this one, if you remember, this one is even a little bit smaller than the one for the, for the Weber function that, that we had, even though you cannot really see it for these numbers. Uh, anyways, uh, you have to watch out here, by the way, a little bit. So I say tau discriminant minus 103, but now tau doesn't uniquely, de uh, sorry, the discriminant doesn't uniquely determine the class polynomial anymore. So it depends on the choice of tau. You get exactly two class polynomials in this case of discriminant minus 103. Uh, okay. So about the size reductions. So and completely analogously to before, I can define the reduction factor. So in this case, you take the quotient of the degree of j by the degree of psi. Uh, and then we have this, this theorem over here that says that for elliptic curve of rank zero, this corresponds to a height reduction of the class polynomials. So I have an modular elliptic curve, rank zero, the sequence of the endpoints for which this condition over there holds. So the height of the J of tau divided by log log of the class number of the imaginary quadratic order goes to infinity. Then I get this, this limit for the quotient of the infinity height of the class polynomials. And there's this degree over there of the extension of KO over K psi of tau. That should have been there before as well, but before I assumed that K psi of tau was equal to K of O. So, and typically this thing is also just goes to RC, which is like a technical thing that's there. Uh, okay, so let's look at the picture for, uh, for this curve uh, before. So on the x-axis, I have the class number. So that was this size of the Picard group of O. And on the y-axis, I have the height reduction. So what the quotient of these logs of the infinity heights of the class polynomials. And well, what's the reduction factor of, of this, this thing, this curve? Well, it turns out if you compute it 72, it's the same as the Weber function, actually. I said it was a bit better, but actually it's just the same. Uh, so, in the limit, you expect that these uh, height reductions go somewhere to 72. And it's not that apparent, like these convergences. It's a bit, I don't know, but the class numbers are just too small, I guess. So, uh, I restricted here, by the way, to prime class numbers. Uh, that's why you have these gaps. And the reason is, well, there's multiple reasons, but one reason is that you, that this uh, takes care of this term on the right here. Then the K of O is a extension of the prime degree of K, then this thing always becomes one. So we always, we always go to the, to this real reduction factor RC. Okay, uh, so we have a lot of open questions actually, but I guess two of the most important ones are to efficiently implement the computational piece. So there's this method using the Chinese Romanian theorem to compute the normal class polynomials. And we still have to implement it for the generalized class polynomials. So right now we do this thing, we numerically compute them using some LLL algorithm and it's very, very slow. And that's why this class number also only goes up to 100. And if you want to do higher class numbers, then you really have to do something, something more efficient. And we also need to still prove the height reductions because I told you 
for elliptic curves, we know that this reduction factor goes to what you expect it to be. But for other curves, we don't know it yet. For example, for x0 plus 239, that's a curve of reduction factor 120, which is higher than this, this Breger Stephen Aachen bound that I showed you. But we haven't proved yet that the quotient of the heights of the polynomials actually goes to 120. And it would be really cool if, if that was actually true. Uh, anyways, that's, that's basically what I wanted to say. <laughs>